Welcome into this episode of Supernovas Unlimited. I'm Avery Howard, joined by Jeff Ekstrom, and today with Jazz Schmidt. Thank you for joining us. Of course, thanks for having me. Yeah, we we said this earlier, but kind of one of the stars behind this, all the other stars, one of the coaches here in Omaha. You have a really special relationship with these girls too, because you're not far removed from your playing career, being so close to where you had a collegiate experience. What's that been like transitioning to where you are now? Mm, it's been super fun for sure. Um, I like living in Omaha and being back because not only am I building new relationships with all the girls here and the coaches and um, the staff, but I have previous relationships from Creighton and all my family that lives in Nebraska. So just being here and being able to um, lean on old relationships and hang out with them and see them and pop into Creighton practices and say hi while also making a bunch of new friends here has been really fun. It's just expanding the Nebraska and Omaha community for sure. Yeah, you're literally a walk away from DJ Sokol Arena. Do you, how often do you get to be around the Creighton program? Um, a lot, actually, which is a huge shout-out to them. They're the best. And so I go probably once a week, hang out, see them. Sometimes they do beach practices when <laughs> the Nebraska weather is nice, and they always invite me to those, too, yeah. which is super fun. Yeah. So, yeah, I go quite a bit. Yeah. You were originally born here in Nebraska, mm-hmm. and then you went to North Carolina, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so you knew – at a young age that this was a volleyball state. Yes. And you got to come back here to play your last year at Creighton. How special was that for you to kind of return home in a sense? Oh, it was really great. Um, I appreciated the opportunity from Booth and the rest of the staff at Creighton. Um, my cousin played basketball at Creighton. He's a little bit older than me, so that's really cool. And then when I was in middle school, I also lived in Nebraska. And so that was just like a big connection to, to not only when I was like one or two, but I actually remember living here when I was in middle school, which definitely helps bring the connection back. Right. So. Yeah, in college, you went to Palm Beach Atlantic, so you went mm-hmm. to Florida. Yes. What was playing volleyball like in the state of Florida coming from, you know, the Midwest? You get the nice weather, you get that mm-hmm. experience. What was like that? What was that like for you? It was the best. <laughs> <laughs> I love Florida. It's my favorite. When we go play Orlando, I'm the happiest I could possibly be because we get to be in Florida. Um, yeah, definitely people in the Midwest are super nice. Um, but, you know, you find people that are similar down there as well. And I have a teammates, a couple of teammates that came from Omaha um, or Colorado um, in North Carolina, all places that I've lived. So I got to meet them too, which was super fun. And I love the beach. I love the warm weather. I love the ocean. <laughs> so I was very happy to be down there for five years. Yeah. It was great. And you chose to come back to Nebraska. <laughs> and I mean, somehow I always come back. I don't know how. I was born here, middle school, college. Somehow I am find my way back. So shout out to my family and yeah. my friends for making me want to come back yeah. and hang out with them. Well, now you're an assistant coach for the Supernovas. Kind of Talk through what that playing experience was like for you and how it's translated into being one of the coaching, you know, just roles here for these girls. Definitely. Well, when I finished playing at Creighton um, in December then of 2022, um, I kind of had to figure out what my goals were. And I thought, you know, after playing for six years in college that I would be ready to transition into coaching. So I moved to North Carolina and started a, a coaching position there, which was awesome. And I loved it. And then when I got the opportunity to come back to Omaha um, and kind of start off by playing and then transition into coaching, it was it was like the most ideal situation, um, especially with it being the first professional league in America. Like, who doesn't want to be a part of that? And so um, coming to mini camp and meeting all these people and like getting to know them and honestly just falling in love with the culture of the team um, and the community and the fan support based around the supernovas I knew for sure that I wanted to be back so when I was able to come back as a coach I was super excited and jumped on the opportunity right away yeah was that a surprise when they when the coaches approached you of transitioning into that role because obviously you went through mini camp you went through training camp and then they approached you with this opportunity was that did that really come as a shock to you um kind of but they were really straightforward from the beginning um, and like honest about kind of who they had brought in, who they had signed and what the situation was looking like for the Supernovas. So it was fun to play like while I had the opportunity to play, but they were very like they did, they just were very straightforward with like okay. what they thought um, might happen with the roster and the team moving forward. So then when we kind of solidified the roster and they were able to make space for me as a coach and more like a player relations coach Mm -hmm. that I feel like is pretty on brand um so I was pretty excited about it not too shocked and how are you liking that role and just kind of navigating the waters of what kind of a player relations um, person does especially in a pro setting 
yeah, it's really fun, um, especially because I was playing with them in the camps first, so I was able to build those relationships, and I feel like they trust me as a player, um, which is great, and as a friend. And then now also being on the coaching side, if I just need to, like, relay information or um, I just help plan different things like the zoo trip or the post-match autographs um, or different kind of organizational, operational things like that, it's pretty easy to just text them or call them or hang, when I'm hanging out with them, just be like, oh, hey, by the way, do you want to do this on this day? And they're like, yeah, perfect. I'm like, awesome, perfect. It doesn't have to be like quite as formal and official and we're just all friends and um, I can just give them information when I see them at practice. Yeah, and, you, and we were spoken to Thomas about this too, being a younger coach on the staff and learning to have the confidence and just being able to not only, you know, learn from these players, but also be able to offer coaching as well and mm-hmm. learning how to be confident with girls of so much experience. How have you seen that happen for you maybe naturally or how have you learned to step into that? Yeah, I think I'm still learning a lot from them. And I think the coaches that are already on staff are super knowledgeable and they give me specific jobs that allow me to succeed and maybe like not put me in a spot where I'm questioning what I should say or what I should do. Um, So just like things in practice, it's very straightforward um, on what I should be doing and how I can help in a way um, where I might not be like overstepping the boundaries of girls that have a lot more experience than me, but also just helping giving them feedback that they might not be able to see while they're in the moment and like on the sidelines of games, just keeping very point blank, track of statistics or things like that. Um, So for me, it's just more about the obvious things that maybe they aren't looking at while they're playing as opposed to what I'm feeling or what I think I'm seeing. It's just they've guided me to give very direct instruction based on statistics and um, like clear – what's that word? When it's not – What's that word again? <laughs> when it's like a not a, it's objective. Oh. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. not subjective. Got you. So my role is definitely not to be giving subjective yeah. advice. It's objective. This is what very clear is what's happening. Do with it yeah. what you will. Not my own subjective thoughts. Got you, got you. So there, we there's so many girls on this team that do have so much experience of whether it's just pro, Olympic, national team experience. How ha- cool has it been as a coach now to learn from them and hear what they have to say? Also, them being coaches on the court mm-hmm. in a sense too. Yeah, it's definitely helping a lot. Um, something, especially in areas of volleyball, like the skills that I'm not as strong as strong at. It's fun to. <clears throat> Sorry, it's fun to hear them talk about it and learn from them. And then, honestly, what I do from there is just repeat back to them what they're talking about with each other. So if I hear them say something about their lineup on the block um, or maybe making a dive move inside, and then a couple plays later they don't do that, I just remind them of what they've already talked about with each other. Um, So, again, not necessarily always coming up with my own things to say that I just feel in my mind, but listening to them, learning from them, and then repeating back to them what they talked about in a moment of stress or a moment where they might have forgotten, I just remind them what they already know and what they've already talked about with each other. Yeah, and even though you haven't coached necessarily at the college game into a professional game, but moving from you know playing so recently in college to professional, what have been some of the biggest changes that have stood out to you? Um, I think definitely speed of the game for sure, and physicality takes another step up. I feel like I have just continued on um, a steady progression of volleyball from playing Division Two in Florida to coming to Division One, Creighton, and not only Division One but a top 25, typically top 20 or 15 Division One program, and then taking another step up to the Supernovas, um, where all of the girls are from top 25 Division One programs and national teams and things like that. So. Every time you think that the speed is maxed out or the physicality is maxed out, it takes another step higher. So I can't even imagine what else is out there, but that's why I'm just taking it one step at a time. Um, So I think physicality and speed, um, even another step up from what I experienced in college. When you say physicality, define what you mean by that for those maybe unfamiliar with the physical aspect in the game of volleyball. Sure. So I, okay, so I am not one to thrive and love the weight room, right? So especially down in Florida, I was like, I'm just going to, you know, do my thing. It's all great and it's fun and everything like that. Then I come to Creighton and I'm like, okay, I got to like, you know, get a little bit stronger, work on it. Like vertical has got to increase. Um, you know, people are strong. They are more fit. They can last longer. They might be obviously you still deplete a little bit going into second set, third set, fourth set, fifth set, but they're still, you know, stronger in the fifth. Um, and then, you know, working on your vertical, then you come – here and everyone's like weight room weight room weight weight room and betty is like weight room weight room (laughs) so we have these sleeves oh man i'm in charge of these sleeves and they lose themselves all the time so the sleeves for our jerseys okay they come in all different sizes 
and Betty was yip yapping about her sleeves because she usually wears a medium and she's doing all this weight, trying to get back in the weight room and all this stuff because her, Dimitrova, you hear all of the players that have the most experience to talk about strength and the, the weight room is equally or more important as the practice gym. And she was disappointed because she had to wear small sleeves and she was joking because her, she was like, my muscles are getting too small. I need to go back in the weight room. And then Cree was like, I wear a medium because my muscles are big. <laughs> and so those two, I mean, they just go at it with the physicality. And I think everyone in the weight room just continues to take a step up. Um, but yeah, physicality is super important and they, they harp on the weight room. So I just think being strong um, and having, you have to have a high vertical. You have to be able to reach, hit over top of the blocks, get good positive touches on the block. Um, so yeah, just strength for sure vertical for sure um betty cree tori brooke others nia really lead the way on that yeah. um they're they're great yeah and i mean i want to get a little insight on what's it like to be on bird's staff okay <laughs> intense relaxed how would you describe being on coach bird's staff mm, i would say <laughs> it's like like a call, like, okay, so I like the ocean. Okay, so I'm going to give, okay, also we play this game. We play, I'm going off on a side tangent, but we play this That's game okay. where we rank things on a scale of one to ten, and you, like, have to tell a story, and I have a secret number in my head, and I try to give you a story and match the number. So being on bird staff is like a ten. So the way I would describe it, and if you didn't know my number was a ten, you would guess ten after hearing this. Let's say you're going to the beach. It's a beautiful, sunny day. The water is calm and clear, and then you get to play a game of spike ball on the side, and it's a really tough, intense battle, and you're sweating, and it's hot, but you have the best partner ever, and you win 21-19. That's what it's like being on first <laughs> <laughs> That was And great. if I said that, you would say, okay, that sounds like a 10 out of 10 day to me, and I would say, yeah. correct, the number was 10. <laughs> the people that lost 21-19 would say, <laughs> that's yeah. What, yeah. Now, what's a saying that she says a lot? Does she have like a certain, I believe the last one she did on our episode was swag. Yeah, yeah swag. swag. She says swag. Um, I mean, she says attack mode a lot. Okay. Like we're always going to be on attack mode, which I like a lot. I'm like, yes, we come out bouncing balls for sure. <laughs> I think Slay has grown on her. I don't hear oh, it quite as much. It. But Slay, I'm for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I try to get Slay out of her more than... We really <laughs> wanted, like, a tagline, and I failed to come up with a good one. So if anyone has one... Yeah, like a sign-up. I'm a big super Slay person, but... <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> to the moon. I don't know. It changes every week. We just yip-yap about random stuff. <laughs> you guys have... I think we've... We've talked about this so much, but the chemistry of this team, and I think it's very evident that within the coaching staff, you guys have clicked very well, and I think that's just like a trickle down. How have you guys been able to, like I think Thomas says, you're kind of more of a facilitator than anything else, mm -hmm. but you know, how do you manage those relationships with it's such a short period of time, and how do you guys balance that intensity with also the amount of fun this group's able to have? Definitely. I think practices and like our progression of the week help with that, and then doing fun things on the side too. Um, like the bus rides are always fun. Um, they never like decline us when we want to like play a fun like two, we play two on two in the beginning of practice or this other random game where you have two balls going at one time across. That that one's fun. Um, and so I think just the progression of the week of getting to play a lot of six on six training and then kind of dialing it back before the game and really focusing and getting in a different gym and serve and pass and locking in. So I think um, they just do a really good job of allowing us to do fun things like going to the zoo or play two-on-two -two before practice, but then also having really intense six-on-six -six in practice, um, and that translates into matches for sure. From a coach's perspective, how do you guys kind of manage all the personalities? I know there's a lot of big personalities, like the girls have said. You know, how do you get the best out of these girls when, you know, some of them are willing to give it all the time in terms of personality and lighting up and other girls, you know, just aren't as much. But mm -hmm. that's a huge part of, especially this year one, is, you know, trying to figure out the, the chemistry and the culture. But how do you find ways, especially maybe being so close in their age, to find how to get the best out of all of them while watching them create those relationships with one another? Sure. Um, I think that just comes from them being professionals and us getting to know them as people outside of just being the athletes um, and just talking to them on trips or if I ever hang out with them outside of practice, just getting to know them a little bit more for who they are as people outside of the volleyball court. 
um, which helps a lot. But then also knowing that each person is different and allowing them to be themselves because some people have been doing this for a really long time and they know what works for them and what allows them to click and just work at their highest level. And so sometimes you just have to talk to them, let them be who they are, and then if you really need something from them, since you have that relationship, you can ask them and say, like, hey, I know this might not be your normal, but I really need this from you today. Um, so instead of demanding the same thing from every single person, every single day, all the time, it's kind of adapting to their needs, um, but knowing that they're holding themselves to um, a high standard as well, and so it kind of is 50-50 on who they are as a person, getting to know them, but also uh, meeting the expectation that the, the team needs from them. Thomas mentioned something interesting when I mentioned about, you know, being at a young age and figuring out how to be a coach now at this level. And he said, you know, one of the things is being, having experiences that I had and for you, maybe being a player, you not only get to see maybe what you want to do, but what you don't want to do. And, mm -hmm. and that aspect for you, probably being a player, you know how you want to be coached versus not want to be coached. Yes. How has that been an advantage for you now being in a coaching role? Yeah, that's definitely a plus. Um, I think it's just, especially having played a couple different positions, like setter and opposite, um, I can relate to them. And so I kind of understand. Sometimes in the practices, I feel like I'm more on the coach's side. And then another day in practice, I might feel like I'm more invested in the player side. And so having that balance, I think that I can relate to both sides and be able to tell maybe Bird one day, hey, I think that they're feeling like this. Or maybe even the players will come to me and they'll be like, hey, um, I'm feeling like this might be a better option for me today. And then I can go relay that to Bird. Um, or same thing on the coaching staff. If they're like, we really need intensity today in practice. And then I might hear something from the girls. I'll be like, hey, like, you know, just keep being intense today in practice. And it's not like a, oh, I'm telling you this and now I'm going to go tell you this. It's just kind of managing a flow of these are what the vibes that I feel over here. These are the vibes that I feel over here. So now I'm going to integrate the vibes yeah. all together. And then everyone's all on the same page um, and just kind of feeling good about the day. Yeah. When we talk about the actual volleyball playing itself and just the league itself, how have you guys from a coaching staff just seen the game already grow from match one and see how it's evolved to where this league and this team is at right now? Definitely. Um, the first – couple of weeks of season was was fun and I think that we were getting in our groove and learning and and there was a lot of fans and then just as things have gone on the biggest thing that I see is when I'm with the players and we're like maybe just going to Target and we're wearing a supernova shirt I mean I would say I would say seven out of ten seven out of ten times if maybe I'm going to Top Golf or to Target or something like that and I'm with a handful of the players they ask for a picture. Like, people will come up and ask for a picture with the girls. Like, we'll be stopped in our day-to-day -day life, and they'll ask for a picture. Or at the airport. Some of us got stranded in Orlando, <laughs> which was crazy, but so fun. Again, <laughs> Florida, right? I was not mad. I was one of the people that got stranded. And we're walking through the airport. We're trying to find always at the gates to go back to Omaha. You know, we're going back to Omaha in the community there at the gates, um, little girls want pictures and stuff like that. Also, our marketing team um, and just people that manage – going out into the community, do a really great job. And so a lot of our players um, will go out and go to different clubs or go to a high V and do super fun things. And those just keep growing and growing and growing. And our spreadsheet for like signups for those, they just keep adding more and more because of the positive feedback that we're getting from that and the amount of people that are coming and attending. And I feel like every day I see Nick posting something on social media of even just like, I think today maybe it was Maggie and Paige at a club and like the line of kids to get, an autograph from two of our rookies is so long. Um, and so also I monitor the autographs post-match. So I'm taking, taking the girls up there and then just seeing like the kids interact with them and being so excited, um, and adults too. But just I would say that type of thing of being out and about in the community and seeing that engagement grow is something for sure um, regarding Omaha. And then franchise-wide, I think, you know, um, people are getting more into it as the season goes on, and it's trying to see who's going to make the playoffs. And so um, the games are being watched in the CBS streaming, not only on YouTube, but, but CBS as well. So I think those things are indicators for sure. Yeah. You get to go manage and like kind of look over those autograph signings. Like, you know, that's also a pretty big moment, I feel like, for you too. You know, you are a woman in volleyball, right? And you're seeing this game grow right before your eyes. I know what it was like for me, even just being a female in sports, watching these girls wanting to go get signatures after the first game. And they're yeah. trying to even figure out the girls' names. They were excited to be there. What's that been like for you to just see this game that you love grow at the same time, too? Yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, 
I was I was joking with Gina over Christmas break um, because I have like seven Nebraska volleyballs in my room from all the camps that I went to when I was in middle school. And I was in my closet and I was look, trying to pack myself up to move to Omaha. And I saw a Nebraska volleyball with like four or five signatures on it. So I know I like picked out my favorite players only. And I like had this ball with all the players. I had this ball with like maybe just one person. And I had this ball with like <laughs> five or six or like of my favorites. And there was a big autograph on one of the panels and it was like G dot Mancuso seven. And I specifically remember like getting that autograph from her. And I asked her like why she only puts G and she was like, I don't know, it's just faster or something. Like, I remember that when I was like, I don't know, 12. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then to be like taking her up to autographs and watching her like do that still today um, with younger kids is super fun. Um, and then also it's nice too, like sometimes I'm standing back there and kids that I coach at Creighton camps or there's lots of Creighton season ticket holders that are super ticket holders that will come up and ask for my autograph as well. And so just like kind of a full circle thing, especially when I'm with Gina um, or you'll hear people talk to like Sydney or Brooke or Tori and be like, I never thought I would cheer for you, but here you are, and now I'm cheering for you. So, yeah, like I said, from kids to adults alike, I think um, seeing those interactions is super inspiring. I love it. I love um, watching them interact with fans. I like interacting with fans um, and just kind of everything being full circle, especially in, in Nebraska. Yeah. We'll start to gear up here for the championships here in Omaha. How exciting is that for this team right now? Is it an extra pressure for this coaching staff and this team, or is it something that's just been an extra kind of driving force these last few weeks? Definitely a driving force. Um, I think, you know, pressure, it comes in in all the games, in in all the circumstances. I mean, I don't think any of us were overly surprised, um, and I don't think any of the players were overly surprised when we found out it's going to be in Omaha because we know that the state of Nebraska loves volleyball um, and the Supernovas have amazing fans. So it was just kind of another motivation of, like, we're not locked into the Final Four, and we want to be locked. We want to be locked now. We want to get in there as fast as we possibly can. So it's definitely just, I would say, more motivation. Um, The pressure is always going to be there. Um, But the girls are great with handling pressure. They've done it all their volleyball careers. Um, And so it's just motivation to make sure that since we're hosting, we're there. Yeah. Going into these last few weeks, what is the mentality for this coaching staff and this team right now? Um, The mentality is, we just talked about this today, (laughs) it was no fear. No fear on the mountaintop. (laughs) <laughs> right. So the championship, <laughs> the championship is the mountaintop, and we're trying to get there. So while we're climbing, we have no fear. Um, we had a great new drill today about just earning your points, attack mode. There it is, attack mode, <laughs> all the time. No fear on the mountaintop. Um, I heard Thomas say it. It's you know it's hard to get there, but it's even harder to stay there. And so we want to just have no fear. We want to climb the mountain. We want to stay on it. So that is, that is where we're at. Attack okay. mode. No fear on the mountaintop. Let's go, super slay. Yeah, I feel like we have to end it right yep. there. Like, and we're running through a wall. Ready, yes. go. Oh, super slow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jazz, for joining us. Of course, us. thanks, thanks you, for having me. And welcome back into Supernovas Unlimited, now joined by Brooke Nunneviller and Allison Mayfield. Thanks for being here, guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Also, before we start, Allison, me and you are from the same hometown. Really? Yeah, I'm an OP kid. Okay. I know. I had to get that out <laughs> Wait, there because I love that. High school? Blue Valley Northwest. Okay. That's right down the street from me. Really? Like yeah. where you live or where you went? Um, I went to St. Thomas Aquinas. So, okay. yeah, like, I don't know few miles away from where I grew up so wow that's crazy maybe yeah. we're neighbors I know we could be, <laughs> we really could be. <laughs> we'll chat later but I realized that earlier I was like oh my god an OP kid it's crazy yeah does it feel like it's been like forever since you found out this league was going to be a thing and now you're here or is it just gone by super quick I feel like for me it's gone by really quickly I had my fo- first phone call May of 2023 and I don't think this league was really like they were starting to figure things out maybe January of 2023 Mm -hmm. so I mean everything just happened so quickly I remember talking to Diane our president and you know even in the summertime of last year she was like so stressed because everything just needed to come together and so I feel like it's just been so fast-paced and like Maeve was saying we have had some breaks but also we've had like four matches in eight days at one point and so I think it's gone really quickly I think this group makes it really fun and it makes time go fast too Mm yeah Where were both of you guys when you found out Omaha was going to be your next team? So I feel like mine's a little bit different than some of the other people Mm -hmm. on the team. Um, 
because I didn't really, I didn't know I was going to be on the team until like it was named. Right. Um, but I didn't really find out about coming to mini camp and training camp and stuff until late November. So it was kind of just a, uh, Hey, we're having people come to this mini camp. Let's see how it goes. Um, and I was hopeful, but not, you know, too hopeful and, and everything's worked out and it's kind of crazy to look back on now. Cause it's only a few months ago, like honestly, that I was living a whole different life and coaching and, um, doing all that. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, for me, it's gone really fast. Repeat your questions. <laughs> no, you're fine. Just where you were when you found out you were going to be part of the Omaha supernovas. Um, I think we were all, we were all together. Um, it was kind of a team meeting and it was in the process of, um, uh, tryouts mm -hmm. or making the final roster and kind of getting that all together. So we had a morning meeting one time and just kind of came together and was announced that like, Hey, the people in this room, this is our, this is our team. And, um, I think that was, it seems like so long ago now, <laughs> but it was, um, an exciting time and also kind of a stressful time, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, but just realizing that okay like all this hard work's paid off and mm -hmm. and this is our team and this is who we continue with like um it was an exciting moment um yeah yeah mm -hmm. I think I mean we are all together when we officially made the team after tryouts but for me when I signed with the team I was just returning from my Turkish season and it was early May I had just gotten back and then I was in the process of going now to VNL with the national team and so it was a really hectic time for me I remember Shelton and a couple other PVF coaches had texted me and they were like oh I want to hop on a call like we have this new league and I had really not heard so much about it at that point and so when I had hopped on a call I was kind of like oh I'll just I'll do this just so you know hear the option and then and I heard, like, everything that it could be. And, you know, I know that Nebraska is one of the most incredible volleyball states. And just having the opportunity to play here was really exciting for me. So I think I was sitting in California with the national team, like, just about to leave back to Turkey for VNL. Um, and I was like, oh, let's do this thing. Mm -hmm. Have, do you guys feel like it's, like, hit you yet? Or when do you think it'll hit you that you're like, okay, I'm on a team that's playing this professional league for the first time ever. Like, I get to say that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's hit. I think yeah. it's hit me at this point. Yeah. I think it, at the beginning, um, it was kind of, it was exciting to go into that first match and not really know what it was going to be like. And mm -hmm. any other league or team that you've played on, you can, you know, watch on YouTube or any other broadcasting network and kind of just see what it looks like where they're playing. But this was all new. And so we didn't know what to expect. Um, and, it was just like once we got out there, I think when we came out of the tunnel maybe for that first home match and it was really exciting, like probably one of the most like exciting wow moments when you stop and you look around and you see the, the arena filled with people and um, everyone's there to support you. And, you know, they'd never seen us before or maybe some of us in college or, or abroad or something, but like just that, that moment when we got out there and saw the fans and saw everything and it was like, wow, this is really mm -hmm. cool. This is really special. Right. I was just talking about this the other day that there's so many, there's only so many times that I can say like how much of a dream come true this is. The amount of questions that I've been asked on an interview or just, you know, family friends who've said, what is it like, you know, to be a part of something, the first thing in the States that's I mean, it's happened before, but I really feel like this is going right. to be a sustainable thing in the future. And it's really exciting to be the first of something. And I've said it's a dream come true. And it's something that I wouldn't have pictured for myself a few years ago. But now here we are and we get to be a part of it. Yeah. And like you mentioned, something you didn't know you could picture. But when you look back on your guys' careers, like what was the starting point for both of you? We were like, hey, volleyball is my sport. And like this has been the start of my journey. What what made you guys choose volleyball way, way back when? <laughs> <laughs> I need to think on this one. For me, I was actually just talking about this yesterday, I think. I came from a volleyball family. So both of my parents, they played. My dad played growing up. My mom played in college. She coached at the University of Arkansas. I have an older brother who's six years older, and he played growing up. He started club volleyball when he was 13. I was in the gym with him all the time. And so, I don't know, for me it was just such a simple thing to be like, oh, it's time for me to play volleyball, you know? And I think my passion grew from the fact that I got to share that with my 
family. So that was always really special for me. Um, I was always in the gym growing up, whether I was watching my parents' games in adult leagues or my brother at high school, middle school games. So it was just, I don't know, it was something that I felt like I needed to be a part of. You had no choice. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not at first, but then I did. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like I did all the sports growing up and really enjoyed um, having the different seasons of, you know, it's track season, volleyball season, basketball season. And then at some point I realized, you know what, volleyball is my favorite. This is what I want to do. I really need to focus on that. Um, and it was kind of, you know, get to college, get a scholarship, go to college. And honestly, I feel like I'm going to age myself a little bit, but like, mm -hmm. I didn't know that many people who played professionally after college. Mm -hmm. Like it was, you go to college, you play, and then there's no options afterwards. Um, and it wasn't until probably my senior year of college that I realized I could continue to play. It just would have to be abroad um, because there were no options at the time. And I, again, just hadn't seen anybody do that yet. It wasn't as normal as it is now. I feel like there's a lot more players that continue to play. Um, and it just wasn't, I mean, people did it, but I didn't know anyone personally mm -hmm. who had. Um, so I think that was kind of a moment where it wasn't like, oh, this is what I'm going to do for the next 10 years of my life. But it just kind of happened. And um, I went and took the chance and played abroad for a year and then another year and another year. And mm -hmm. um, I think it, it's so cool now that the players coming out of college have this opportunity to, um, stay here, be with their family, be with their significant others and, and just like get the opportunity to continue to play volleyball. Because when I was playing, it was leave everybody, you know, to go re you know, locate and figure it out to go somewhere where you don't know anybody or never been and, um, live there for the next nine months or just don't play. And a lot of really, really high level volleyball players, I think would have continued to play had they had this option, but they just didn't. So, um, it was kind of like, you know, my process was not something that, oh, I see myself doing this for this long. It just kind of continued to happen. And now being back and having this opportunity, it's like, I wish it would have come around a little bit sooner, but like, so I'm so grateful to be here and be part of it. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, Allison, I want to dive deeper into that for a second. Kay. Cause I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eight years experience. Is this league really Americanized or there's some similarities that you can draw from your experiences overseas? I think there's definitely similarities. Yeah, I mean, you have a lot of players who've played professionally overseas. So um, that like level and just the, the game itself um, with all the players that have that experience, I feel like it naturally flows into it. Um, obviously, you have some players right out of college who that college game still in it a little bit but I think for the most part it's just high level volleyball and you've got a lot of athletes out there that are competitive and want to compete and um, you know the league is is showing that at this high of a level there's not going to be one dominant team like Atlanta's in first right now but like anybody can beat anybody at any given night and I feel like that's not always the case um mm -hmm internationally either I feel like there's usually a couple top teams that just kind of dominate everybody um but I think there's it's a little bit of a mix but I think it, for the most part it's just competitive high level volleyball but so yeah with that even balanced where all the teams are at is there an international league that's kind of similar or is it really just like the PBF is unique in the way that every team is mostly balanced um I, I can't think of a league that only has seven teams, and I know this yeah. is the first mm -hmm. year, so it's kind of hard for that. Um, uh, most leagues have 10 to 15 teams, mm -hmm. um, and then you play everybody once or twice, and um, here we're playing everybody four times. So you really have the opportunity to catch somebody on an off night or, you know, anything can happen. And and so you have to really go into every match knowing that we've, we've got to give our best or else we might not get this one. Um, so it's kind of a little bit different there. I know in the future years, like, it'll be – probably a little bit more similar where maybe it'll be a double round robin. You play everyone once at home and once away, yep. but um, off the top of my head, yeah, I can't think of anything, any league that's exactly like that, but. Just going off that a little bit, I don't know if there's another country in the world that has the amount of just talented volleyball players that we do. I mean, you can say right now, maybe the USA is not ranked number one, but, and they have a ton of talent in like Turkey, Italy, Serbia, all those leagues, but the depth that we have and like the college system that we have, it just builds a lot of, you know, talent. And I think that can be the future for this league itself because we have that much depth. And that's why these seven teams are really talented right now. 
Yeah, you mentioned that. And I think it's interesting because, you know, there's so many players on this team alone that had to go overseas and now they're back and people are like, oh my gosh, I remember that name now. Or I remember watching them play. And I think as, as exciting as that is for the talent to be back here, you just mentioned a good point. Like now there's kind of like a pipeline of talent straight from college. And I think we kind of saw that this year with college basketball going into the WNBA everyone's like super excited because they can track it longer. And even though the WNBA has been along, been around longer, obviously, but how exciting is that for you guys to know that, okay, now we've got a constant, you know, these girls don't have to go. They're kind of forgotten for a little while by just all the fans that loved them in college. And now they could just stay here and just, we get to grow this thing year after year. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like I've already heard, I mean, as I've mentioned before, Nebraska is such a massive volleyball state and they support our sport so much, but they love their Huskers, you know, and I've already heard like you had Merritt Beeson come to our match the other night and it's like, oh, come be a supernova, you know, so they're already excited for that transfer to naturally happen. Um, And even a lot of people, I played Nebraska in the tournament my last year at Oregon. And so a lot of people here had watched me play in that match as well. And so just hearing that, I think they're really excited. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it goes back to what we were talking about before, like having the opportunity to not have to leave everything you know here and go play abroad halfway across the world and like continue that pipeline. I think it'll keep more talented players like playing Mm because you can, if you want to have another job while you do this, you can. So like if you're passionate about your career, and I'm sure there's an extent to this, but like Sydney has a job, Gabby has a job, um, they're working while, while we're doing this, so it's like having the ability to stay put and maybe having Nebraska players coming and playing for the Supernovas, like that's going to be just getting those fans t- um, coming to support us. It, it, it is really cool to have that pipeline and just uh, keeping the talent because there is so much talent, like keeping the talent here rather than having to go play abroad and and. I do not regret my experience abroad. I loved it. Like, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't an option for me. And now people have the option. So if they want us to go do that, that's awesome. You can go do that and come back and know that you right. you don't have to go play for a couple years. And then if you don't like it or you miss home, you get homesick. Like, you have options here. So, um, yeah, and just keep saying the same thing. But it's just so cool that, like, yeah. this is here now and, and it, young people college players are able to to find a a good fit right out of college right and we mentioned the college game I want to touch on that for both of you guys because you guys are a part of two pretty dominant programs so just we'll kind of do both of you guys but what led you to the schools that you decided to I know you're close to home but Mm -hmm. for you not so is close to home so what led you guys to your respective programs I um I had an interesting recruiting experience I think now a couple of their recruiting rules have changed to where the process is a little bit later on in their high school career but for when I was getting recruited it was like eighth grade freshmen were committing and you know that that wasn't my path at all so I honestly had a goal to go to Stanford and that was kind of like the school that I thought I was going to go to I was recruited there since my freshman year um and I was recruited under John Dunning and Denise Corlett and um Anyway, there was a coaching change that happened towards the end of my high school career about the time where I was applying and everything. And I'd had schools that, you know, had come with me along that journey, but ultimately had to move on. And Oregon was one of them. And they'd always kind of stayed with me. And they had gotten a new head coach. And I just loved him. I'd had him in the past. I'd had him for USA. And Matt Ulmer is honestly one of the best coaches I've ever had. And he also gave me the opportunity to hit at the University of Oregon. So a lot of the top schools around the country were recruiting me as a libero and it just wasn't necessarily my passion and so I took the opportunity with him and it was the best decision of my life but I originally looked at Oregon because I wanted to stay you know on the west coast a little out of state but close enough to home where I didn't feel too homesick so I mean I love my decision and (laughs) it was such a awesome place for me to end up in a good transition into my professional career as well. Yeah, um, mine, I obvi- or I honestly feel like I started getting recruited before I knew that I wanted to play volleyball, like in college. Um, coach Posey was the assistant coach at Kansas when uh, I was there, and she was just recruiting me nonstop. She, every time we'd go to a uh, qualifier, she's on my court. Every power league, she's on my court. Um, so it was really nice to just know that, like, 
Kansas was interested and wanted me. Now, if I'm being honest, growing up in Kansas City, I was a K State fan. Oh no! Um, so that <laughs> was wow, yeah, you. <laughs> that was really <laughs> difficult for me. Um, and I I took visits to Kansas and loved it and loved Coach B, loved the program, loved Co- Coach Posey, everybody who was there. Um, and so I knew that I really liked it, but it was pretty early on uh, in the process, and I didn't feel like I needed to make a decision right away. Kind of waited probably longer than they would have liked, um, explored some other options. And I just realized that like, you know what, this is 45 minutes from home. I didn't necessarily want to go that close to home. Um, but you're in college, you make it as close as, as you want it to be. So if I wanted to go home and be there for, you know, Easter, uh, dinner or something I could, but I was, you know, on my own and in, uh, in my apartment or dorm or whatever. But, um, I think just in the end, I, I really appreciated and felt like I want, I, they wanted me like they, and there's something to be said of like, Oh, you know, yeah, we're interested, Mm -hmm. but like you want to go somewhere where you're wanted. Mm -hmm. So I felt very wanted and I was very happy with the team and everything there. And it all just felt like it was the right fit. So Mm -hmm. I I think that's actually a pretty interesting conversation since you bring that up for, you know, if we have younger volleyball girls listening or parents even kind of, you guys talk about how different those recruiting processes look for you, but at the end of the day, it's where you're wanted the most. And I know sometimes that can be a tough decision, but you guys just spoke on how those processes were different for you guys. When you look back on it, it sounds like you guys don't regret anything, but if you had any advice for, you know, parents or young girls listening, making those tough decisions, what would be those things that you know now that maybe you wish you would have known? I would say I was very lucky because my mother had gone through this entire process herself. And then along with being not only a college athlete, but a college coach, she was also the recruiting director for the club that I was at. So, I mean, just having her guidance that whole time and just her little voice in the back of my head through every single phone call, through every single visit, it was just very, very helpful to me. So honestly, like I was really well prepared for everything I would say like a lot of the advice that she gave me was to not make rash decisions like the amount of times that I went and visited a school and it was like I loved it and then I went to go visit another school and I was like oh I like this a little Mm -hmm. bit more you know um it happened a lot I mean there was probably five schools that I could have pictured myself at but at the end of the day like Oregon was the one that you know fit best with me so I would just say like one take your time two like be wanted you know really feel that like not only you really want to be at this school, but they want you just as bad. Um, And I think you need to make a list of priorities as you're being recruited. For example, for me, I wanted to go play right away. Wanted to be on the court, wanted to make an impact. Um, Another thing was I wanted to go be a hitter as more than I wanted to go be a libero. Um, And three, it was really like the community aspect and like how well the team was gelling and the coaching. And so I think just making your list of priorities, making a pros and cons and just not making any rash decisions. Yeah, I agree with all that. I think you said it really well. And just being a a former college coach, um, like you, you know, if it's the right fit, I feel like you you make your list of priorities, but you could have a dream school. This is my dream school. This is where I want to go. And maybe they're not recruiting your position in that class. Mm -hmm. Like it's, that just happens sometimes and it's heartbreaking, but like keep an open mind. Like if this is my dream school, then have like a list of this is, you know, five or six schools that I would really love as well. And then if, you know, you find out, okay, well maybe they're not quite as interested as I am in them, then you just keep an open mind and, and know what you want. And you will know if it's the right fit. Like you go on the visit and for me, and I feel like for a lot of volleyball players, it's how you gel with the rest of the team and the girls that are there and like what the locker rooms like and, and all that stuff. So I think having your list of priorities, but then also just if it feels like it's forced, maybe it's not right because Mm -hmm. I feel like that's when girls are unhappy and then maybe leave. Um, So keep an open mind and then just like you, you'll know when it's the right fit. You decided to stay on the Midwest, and I, so not the Midwest, the West Coast. <laughs> You're in the Midwest, but I want to touch on it real fast because we're not he- familiar really with what Oregon looks like, and I've seen pictures of Oregon's <laughs> <So> <laughs> school. Can you just give us a little snapshot of what going to school was like there? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's another university in the country that has the c- facilities and you know some of the resources that we have I think Phil Knight just being like a major Nike funder yeah. and going into the university it really we're, we're so spoiled there yeah. as athletes truthfully um 
it's such a beautiful state as well. Like, I think that was something I was not used to living in growing up in Arizona. It's like, it's desert, yeah. it's cacti, it's, you know, lots of sun. And at Oregon, it's like a very different climate. It's so, so green, like the evergreens. And it's just such a beautiful state to be a part of. And I think that drew me there too. Um, but that does come with like six months of rain out of the right. year. So that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. that was tough. Mm-hmm. You know, some seasons were a little rougher than others, but, um, no, it was such an incredible school to be an athlete at, in especially. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Allison coming here to Omaha and, and trying back to your college career was a little, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you had a little reunion with Bird, right? Cause yes. she was an assistant at your last season. Yes. Otherwise, your mm-hmm. best season at Kansas, too. <laughs> Correlation? <laughs> okay. Uh, last well, season, best season. Like. Well, yeah, because uh, you broke a couple of single-season records oh, yeah. that year. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, just like regrouping with Bird, I mean, was it just kind of a long road back? Uh, I mean, how was it reuniting with Bird? Yeah. Um, so she coached me my, my senior year. I think she was only there. She came maybe the spring of my junior year, and then we had just the fall. Um, so didn't get a ton of time with Bird, but uh, we kept in touch over the years, and she's just a great person. And um, actually, I was a volunteer assistant at Texas A&M three years ago oh. when she was the head coach there. So yeah. kind of reuni- reunited there. Yeah. Um, and then just have we've always kept in touch. Like she's a great person, and I as I got from my playing career to my coaching career, and just kind of like looking for a mentor. Um, yeah, had her and always was able to reach out to her and ask her questions and stuff. But, yeah, um, it's a small world. It seems like that was so long ago. And, and I'm sure we're both very different people now. Um, but at, at our last match in Atlanta, one of my old teammates came and, you know, hadn't seen her in 12 years. And her and Bird and I, we had mm. took like a little selfie. So it was kind of a full <laughs> circle <laughs> full circle moment. But, yeah, it's kind of fun. Has your approach to volleyball changed since you made – since going back to a player, I mean, you coached those few years and now a player. How has your approach changed? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I think, honestly, when we talk about, like, skill-wise, I think coaching has kind of made me a better player, which is crazy because I hadn't played for, like, three or four years. Um, but just the the vision of, you know, hitting on a box, trying to hit to a specific um, player or just the reps and um, – experience really um that's been really helpful I think also just having kind of more of the coaching mindset of like okay what are we trying to accomplish here and um these are our goals like how are we gonna how are we gonna do this uh it's been interesting transitioning back into the player's role um I've enjoyed it and obviously loved volleyball so much that like I wanted to continue to play and play again um but yeah it's just it's an interesting uh, transition from player to coach to player um and i hope that i've managed it well but um oh she has (laughs) (laughs) we'll be at practice in a drill and i'm like Maeve, I need to talk to you about this. And, like, we'll literally just – she'll give me her, like, coaching perspective, and it's, it's really helpful. I mean, I can just tell that she has, like, the coaching mindset as well, which it's is hard. awesome when, like, we have so many vets and, like, we have, like – I'm kind of a rookie, you know, like, year, like, season-ish three. But at the same time, like, I have so much to learn. And when I have people like her, when I have people like Betty, Naughty, you know, it's just really nice to have them on the court. Yeah, we, we've t- <laughs> we've talked about that a, a little bit with all the girls, actually, just about how much – experience is on this team and like when I know earlier Sophie was like I just sit there sometimes and look around I'm like whoa you know like how, do you guys have those moments where you know you realize all the experiences and all the backgrounds you guys get to play with how just impactful that is to not only just use a player but just this team mm-hmm. yeah I mean I try to soak it up as much as possible I think Honestly, like the average age on our team is like 29 or 30. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, they're probably like 27, 28, maybe like, at a little bit lower because yeah, we've okay. got quite a few rookies. Yes, rookies, that's yes. true. Um, but we have just so much experience and I mean, international experience. A lot of people that have played internationally and just have so many different volleyball backgrounds um, that I just try to learn. Yeah, it's cool. I mean... Yeah, you have your own experience and then having other people that have their experiences and then it all comes together. And like you said, it's just such a unique thing. I, I've been part of teams where there's a big age gap, um, between players, but not like right out of college. And then you've got Betty who's got 22 years of professional experience. (laughs) Like it's just really cool to, to have that expertise in that, like, Hey, I need a little bit of help. Like, what do you see? And even as you know, I'm one of the more experienced players, but like, 
if I'm struggling with something like, Hey, what do you think this is? Mm -hmm. And, and having just that knowledge and that general volleyball IQ, um, from a lot of the players, uh, is great. And it's just a really cool experience. It's, it's crazy to me because I have been coaching for the last few years and like Brooke and some of the younger girls, like I could have coached them. (laughs) Like (laughs) I have players that are older than them that I coached like three years ago. Um, so it's, it's just interesting and and it's fun to be part of the team again, but yeah, the, the experience that we have on this team is, I don't know if there's another team out there that has as much like Mm -hmm. years pro experience as, as this team does. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool. When you guys look at where this team started, I guess it was January to where they are now. I guess we've said that about the league in general, just the game itself has evolved. But how have you guys seen just this team, not only, I guess, probably grow together, but just play differently together as the season's gone on? I think something that's special about our team is like just the depth. And I think we get really comfortable with every single player in practice as well. Um I remember watching like not only our matches and feeling that, but watching other matches as well and just kind of thinking like, oh, there's some there's some sloppy plays that are happening. And I mean, if you think about almost any other team in the world, no matter what sport it is, no matter what gender it is, it's like you join a team and there's a culture established. There's all of these other things. There's different players that have been there for five years. It's like with this team and with every team in PVF, it's like we are just kind of thrown together and it's like go figure it out go create your culture um so I would say like at the beginning of the season there is just kind of a lot of like you can see that a little bit you could see a little bit of sloppiness a little miscommunication just p- things that you're not necessarily comfortable comfortable with everyone on the court I think now I'm watching every single match and I'm like wow this is some really high level volleyball and you maybe look at a team like San Diego Vegas who didn't necessarily have the best record in the beginning and now you can just see them like start to thrive right now because they're just so comfortable they're starting to establish their strengths and I think it's really fun to see and I think it'll only continue to get better in future years yeah I agree with that I think it's from the beginning there's been so much talent and and you can see the level is super high but you can just continue to see these teams coming together more and playing more as a unit and like getting used to who they're playing next to and kind of establishing their identity um where like you said we're all kind of just thrown together in the mix and and so much talent but you haven't actually played unless you know a couple college teammates here and there you haven't actually played with any of these players so it it does take time to get used to passing next to someone new or playing defense and you know we're still working in practice about like um, what are we going to do how are we getting used to playing next to the other players on the team and I think it's just you can see it as the season goes on. Players are, and teams are getting more comfortable with each other and just gelling more as a unit, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you guys are two of those players that have kind of helped forge that culture a little bit. How has that happened? Maybe naturally, not naturally, that, you know, you said you kind of thrown together, figure it out, there's no established culture. What's that looked like for you two in your guys' roles and making sure that's, you know, something we want to make sure we lay that foundation early? I really think it started with our mini camp, honestly. I think, like, we went into the gym and it was we are just all so, so open-minded and we're all players that put in a lot of effort on the court and off the court. And so um, I think for me, a lot of the times I earn or people earn my respect by like showing their effort on, on the court and like what they're doing as players. And I think that's why we all like each other so much because we're all, we're all like that. And I think that's really special to be a part of, especially with a group of all new girls, but it really started in mini camp. And I think we've kind of continued that foundation since. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it was the first time I think I said this at mini camp was like the first time I had been in a gym with so much talent and so many players that are just all out effort. Like, um, I've been on some great teams, but from top to bottom, everybody was just going like the whole time we were hitting, I don't know how many balls in a row, but it was just like, nobody got tired. We were just keep going. And, and I think it just, it's refreshing to know, like, I'm always going to give my best. And like, I can tell she's always going to give her best. And that's just as a unit, it's like, wow, okay, this is, this is really cool. And, and I feel like the whole, like, um, team chemistry, it kind of happened organically. Like I said, like you respect players who are going in day in and day out and giving their best and and I don't think we had to work that hard to to get our team to like like each other um yeah. <laughs> I think it's just like-minded players and um everybody's going hard all the time so you can't really have any qualms with any of that mm-hmm. yeah I mean why do you think you guys like you just mentioned just gelled instantly because I mean it's a melting pot of experiences 
Is there, I mean, I guess I'm just curious why that it clicked so instantly. Just a good group of girls, yeah. honestly, and it's not common. Like, it's very yeah. rare to find, but, I mean, I guess that comes from our coaching staff. You know, they put these girls together. I think they recruited a lot out of personality and grit, and I think that's what they got, and with those similarities, I think we just gelled so easily. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's just, uh, like, good people, and everyone is so supportive. I know we have how many players on our roster right now? We have 14, obviously, on the active roster, but then we've got some injury reserve, all this <laughs> yeah. stuff. But but it's just, like, everybody – only six can play at a time, and I feel like everybody is supportive of every other player. There's no ill will ever. It's like, hey, like, I'm pushing you to do better, and but I want you to do so well, like – in the game, you know, like everybody is just genuinely wants the team to be successful and wants everyone to be successful. And I feel like that's kind of not rare, but I think it's just, it speaks to the team and the nature of players that we have. And just like everybody is so supportive and we want the team to do well. That's what we're all, we all have the same goal. We all want to win. Um, and we want to do well. So I feel like I've mentioned this and Josh probably like, okay, Avery, we get it. You think this team's fun, but the team is so much, <laughs> the team is so much fun to watch, whether it's on the court or just off the court and on the bench. Like, how do you guys balance that aspect? Is it just like something that came naturally, but like, you know, who sparks that? Like, where does it come from? I think we have some big personalities on the <laughs> big, team. Yeah. Uh, we have some big personalities and I think it's just like, do you got to have fun with yeah. it? Right. Like, yeah. so if you, if you aren't, on the court, you know, we're going to do everything we can to hope, like, make sure they can hear us and they can feel the energy and they can feed off that energy. And, and we're just like the hype, hype squad there on the bench. And, um, I don't know. I think it, it's just fun. You, you have more fun when, yeah. like, mm -hmm. when you're enjoying it and, and you're really trying to contribute, whether you're on the court or whether you're off the court. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a balance, but I mean, I think we do a really good job. Yeah. No, no matter who it is, no matter where you are. I mean, we just do a great job with that. Well, my, my observations, I say you guys do a great job. It's fun to watch. But we also mentioned this last week with Nazi because she kind of was here a little bit, or she's lived here a little bit before this. She's kind of gave us a whole list of restaurants and all this stuff. We kind of wanted to know what you guys, we heard Sophie, she's a golfer. You're kind of a golfer. Where do you guys get up to when you're not on the court? That kind of leads to that fun culture this team gets to have. I, 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 this isn't, this isn't the first time that like I've got this question and I just don't know how to answer it because it's just like, Hey, I'm going on a walk. Anybody want to come on a walk yeah, with yeah, me? Exactly. Like, Hey, we're going to go to top golf. Who wants to come? Um, in mini camp, it was like, Hey, we're doing a puzzle together. <laughs> like we, I mean, there was like the puzzle bat signal was sent out and the group message was like, we're puzzling right now. And, and I don't know, there's not like a certain thing that's like, yeah. this is, this is what happened. Like it's just, we, we enjoy hanging out with each other and include one another. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it is really interesting to me because I feel like a lot of teams have like little clicks, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's this group and there's this. Mm -hmm. like, I genuinely no. don't feel like we have that. It's either. like one day I could be hanging out with these four people. The next day it's a completely no, like different group. And I think we just all enjoy each other's company. <laughs> like it's, we could say that a hundred more times. I yeah. know. It's so true. It yeah. Really it's is. crazy. Yeah. Have you, have you guys found any good spots? <sighs> You see, with restaurants and yeah. things, like, I'm not even going to lie, I cook every single meal for myself. Oh. So there hasn't been one time where I've just gone out to eat by myself, pick something up, like, not once since I've been here. Maybe if, like, we're all going to dinner, mm -hmm. like, I'll go with someone and I'll go with a group to dinner, but not by myself. Um, but I, I've been on a bunch of walks, yeah. so I like to, I don't know, there's a couple, like, bodies of water mm -hmm. that I'll walk around. I can't, like, think of specific names, yeah. but um, I'm actually very surprised with how big Omaha mm -hmm. is, and, like, even the city. Sometimes I'll walk around the city, I'll look at cute coffee shops, but, yeah, no, I mean, nothing particular, but at the same time, uh, we definitely venture out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's not, like, one place that we go all the time, yeah. you know? Um, Sophie mentioned Top Golf. Yeah, like, yeah. We've gone there a few times, and I think that's just kind of a fun place to go and, and relax. But, like, we'll try new places. I think we went to Moolah for a Ooh, birthday. Yeah. That was really good. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're just couple new places here and there but yeah. it's not like oh this is our spot yeah you know? mm -hmm. yeah well last week not to like if you ever need a list text me she has them. now i'm gonna be like i'm texting brooke because i don't know what to make myself for dinner <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should just send me what's in your fridge and i got perfect you. oh my I gosh just... look at this making friends okay that's great well thank you guys so much for joining today yeah, thanks oh, for yeah. having us thanks for having us <laughs>